This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. This is part eight of graphing trig functions. And we're working with horizontal translations of the sine functions, also called phase shifts. So we're gonna go over how to graph this function, y equals sine of x minus pi over three. In part seven, we did our first horizontal translation. So make sure you've watched that one already. All right, so here we go. First we have to know our basic sine function, y equals sine x. Remember we have a period of two pi, amplitude of one, range of negative one to one, and these are our five key points or ordered pairs. Remember these are ordered pairs, zero, zero, pi over two, one, etc. Now we want to get the key points for this graph. And we have to pay attention to what we're taking the sine of. It's x minus pi over three. But we know the sine is zero, so if what was in that parentheses was zero, it would be easy to take the sine because we know the sine is zero is zero. So what we want to do is take what's in parentheses, the x minus pi over three, and set it equal to zero, and that means x equals pi over three, and this actually will be our phase shift. Remember, x equals pi over three. So we are going to have a phase shift of pi over three units, and now are we going to the right or the left? It's positive pi over three, so we're gonna go to the right. So keep in mind, this graph is going to look just like y equals sine of x, except all the ordered pairs are going to be shifted three units to, to the right. Shifting three units, pi over three units to the right means all of our x coordinates of our um, key points here will have pi over three added to them. All right, so let's see what that means. Instead of, oops, instead of zero, actually I'm not going to put the line here, I'm going to put the line here instead. Our new x coordinates are going to be zero plus pi over three which I'm going to simplify right here and write that as just pi over three. Pi over two plus pi over three. All right, now we gotta get a common denominator there. So you have to remember how to deal with your fractions. Let me do it down here. If I have pi over two plus pi over three, see my common denominator is gonna be six. So I'm gonna multiply this by three over three and this by two over two. That gives me three pi over six plus two pi over six. That gives me five pi over six. Okay, now notice my first value of x has pi over three. My next one is five pi over six. I could go ahead and do pi plus pi over three as well. You just go down the line, but you've got to get a common denominator again. This one, there's room for me to do it. I could put three over three, right? And that'll give me four pi over three. But this is a little bit tricky because where people have trouble with graphing these functions and with fractions is not knowing where to make these markings on their axis. So I'm gonna rewrite x one more time so they all have the same denominator. Okay, so what will happen is I'm looking and seeing what's the least common denominator going to be? Six. So I wanna write pi over three as something over six. That would mean two pi over six. Then I see this is simply already with a denominator of six pi over six. And the next one, let's see I hadn't added it yet. I know that these increments go up by the same amount. So I notice, what did I do to the numerator? I added three pi. So my new, my next order pair 
should have 3 pi more in the numerator or 8 pi over 6, which of course is the same thing as 4 pi over 3. Okay, what's the next one going to be? So I'm adding 3 pi over 6, I'm adding another 3 pi over 6, what's the next one going to be? 11 pi over 6. And what's the next one going to be? 14 pi over 6. I know these can reduce, but it's easier, believe me, when you're ready to graph these ordered pairs and we're finally getting x in the form we want with a common denominator for all five of these ordered pairs. And what's my y value? I am doing, let's remember what we're doing, we're doing the sine of x, I think it was minus pi over 3. Let's look up here. Yes, we're graphing y equals sine of x minus pi over 3. But the cool thing is, these ordered pairs that I've chosen, the 2 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, and 14 pi over 6, when you plug those in for x, you're going to get these values over on the left, look over here, the 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So these values I have for the sine will now be right here. All right, so let's kind of review what I did. You could just take each of these x coordinates and add pi over 3 to it, but you got to get a common denominator. So you could have kept on going 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 3, get a common denominator, and you would end up with 11 pi over 6. And then the last one, you would do 2 pi plus pi over 3, get a common denominator. You would get 7 pi over 3, but then you would get a common denominator here, 14 pi over 6. So it's up to you how you want to get there. I like to do it this way. I figure out the first one. My first one, x equals pi over 3, I just add that to 0. I start there. And then I add pi over 3 to my next one. Okay? And then I decide on the common denominator of 6. Okay? Then I go to my second column and I see how am I getting from one numerator to the next? I'm adding 3 pi, so I add 3 pi again. I add 3 pi again. I add 3 pi again. You do want to make sure that these really are ordered pairs on this graph. So you should do a little check just in case you do some arithmetic wrong here. Like if you put 5 pi over 6 for x, right? Put it in that for x and you do 5 pi over 6 minus pi over 3. Actually compute that. You're going to get pi over 2 and the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So you will get this correct order pair, 5 pi over 6, 1. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take these five key points, those are the five order pairs that we want, and we're going to graph one cycle of this function. And we have to be very careful. Note that all the increments are in 6. Whatever that denominator is, that means that's how many little spaces you want until you get to pi. By the way, this might take a whole piece of paper to do this problem. All right, so now I'm ready to make my markings. Notice I'm going from 2 pi over 6 up to 14 pi over 6. So I need to put my y-axis over to the left pretty far. I know it's not very straight because I need to make 14 little hash marks here. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, right? 6 pi over 6, so I'm going to call that pi. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that'll be 2 pi. And then here's your two extra marks. That's going to be 14, but I can go out to 15 and 16, etc. And I could do some on the left as well. I'm going to draw my uh, y-axis hopefully slightly straighter here. A little bit better. And let's see, my range is going from negative 1 to 1, so let's just call this negative 1 and this positive 1. And now we're ready. Be very careful that you have everything with a common denominator so it's easy to find where those ordered pairs are. That's the most common mistake in graphing that people make. It's totally inconsistent and then it won't look like a sine function. All right, so let's do it. 2 pi over 6, 0, so that means I go 
two marks over in zero. Now I'm going to go five pi over six. So notice I'm really just going three more spaces, right? Remember what I did? I added three pi over six each time. So three more spaces and that's up at one. All right. So on the x-axis I go three more spaces. That should be my eight pi over six, right? If you count from the beginning, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you're at zero again. Then nine, ten, eleven, nine, ten, eleven. Here I am down at negative one. And then three more and I've got it. Doing the phase shift is the hardest when it comes to graphing because it's getting the right marks on your x-axis. And this is one cycle. I could have gone one, two, three more. I know there's another point down here, right? I could go a little bit further if I want, and I know it starts heading up again, etc. And so there we have y equals the sine says y equals the sine of x minus pi over 3. Unless you have all of these little markings, you're not going to get it correct. You can't just sort of like guesstimate where those are. So be careful when you're making your graph. All right, let's just finish by saying everything we want to know about this function. y equals the sine of x minus pi over 3. We know the domain is in between negative infinity and infinity in the range. Huh, still going between negative one and one. The amplitude, that's one, right? The amplitude comes from the coefficient of the sine. And so if there's no number there, it's assumed to be one. And the period, it's still two pi might be hard to see, but from here to here is two pi units. Now, remember we said this was a phase shift of, okay, so here's the new thing, the phase shift. This was pi over three units to the right. So remember what the graph of y equals sine x is. I'm going to do that in black. Remember this? Well, where's pi over 2? It's right here in the middle. There it is. And then it was down here at pi. And then 3 pi over 2, that's between pi and, whoops, sorry. And if you would have graphed y equals sine of x, sketch it. Whatever. Notice this is pi over three units to the right, the green cycle. So this is y equals sine x. Notice it looks like all the ordered pairs are shifted pi over three units. See how this is a, these two spaces, that's two sixths of the way to pi. So that's one third of the way to pi. That's pi over three units to the right. But it's hard unless you've made all these markings to get that to look correct. All right, so there we are, the graph of y equals sine of x minus 3. I'm just going to put that in green just to be consistent. And don't want to get confused with this y here. That was, all right, just your x and y axis. Okay, so we have y equals sine of x minus pi over 3, the domain, the range, the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and we're concentrating on the green here, but do you note that it is, this is why it's called a phase shift, it's pi over 3 units to the right of where y equals sine of x is. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.